The prepare screen offers a print preview with sizing, layout tools, and a built-in materials database, making preparing your laser jobs for production very easy. The prepare screen is identified with the target icon at the top and can be navigated by selecting that icon at the top center of the screen or by choosing the create job button from the design screen. Once the file is in the prepare screen, it can be arranged onto the material using the overhead camera or red dot pointer for exact positioning. On the left side of the prepare screen are the two primary tabs, the designs tab and the jobs tab. These two tabs contain all the content that is stored in Ruby. The jobs tab files are different from the designs because they have already been set up with the material and are ready to be laser processed if they do not need to be relocated or changed. For example, suppose I open up this tiger plaque job. In this case, it has already been set up with the bamboo wood parameter and the time shown next to the job indicates how long the job took to laser process, suggesting that it has already been run before. A job in the jobs list cannot be combined with another job. Jobs can be deleted from this list by selecting the tiny trash can next to each job, and then confirming this deletion if desired. The jobs list is completely searchable with the search bar at the top, allowing for quick access. The designs list differs from the jobs list because these are the files that have not been yet set to the laser. Because of this, any file from the designs list can be imported into the job file by selecting the arrow on the left side of the desired design. The designs list is completely searchable, with the search bar at the top, allowing for quick access. The main toolbar along the top of the screen contains all the tools needed for the prepare screen. Starting with the new job, blank page icon on the left side of the toolbar will create a new page, asking if the existing job needs to be saved. The next tool is the direct import button. Pressing this will allow you to import files from other locations on the computer, opening a computer folder so that files can be selected. Once opened, these files will be placed into the design list, and they can be chosen to bring them into the design screen. Additionally, files can be dragged into this screen from another computer monitor or folder. And these files will automatically show up in the prepare screen, while also storing the new imported design in the designs tab. Any file can be manually saved in the jobs list by selecting the save icon. If a changed version of this design is needed and you do not want to affect the original job, the save as new job button can be chosen and Ruby will assign the word new next to that job and save it as a new job. The clock icon on the toolbar calculates the job time. The time given will change based on what material parameters are used. Once pressed, the time will briefly show on the bottom right side of the screen, and this time will stay paired with this job showing on the produce screen when the laser is ready for processing. The select object tool or cursor is used to select, move, rotate, scale, and size jobs and designs in the prepare screen. In addition, when an object is selected, the small pencil icon can be chosen. This will open up the graphic into the design page, allowing for editing to be performed as needed. In this example, I will remove the logo from this design and then select Update Job to bring that design back to the prepare screen. In addition to the pencil icon, there is a small icon with four small squares. When selected with the selection tool, it will open up the array feature. This feature will provide the tools to array a single design into rows of that same design. Moving the mouse over the grid will automatically place that selected design into rows. Or the exact number of rows and lines can be placed here. The rows can also have the spacing adjusted as needed here. They can then be reset, updated, or canceled. If updated, the changes will take effect. This array will show as a single design. To edit the array, select the same array icon to make any changes.
Next are the drawing tools. The line tool to draw lines, the circle tool to draw circles and ovals, and the square tool to draw squares and rectangles directly onto the prepare screen. Next to the drawing tools is the undo and redo buttons for undoing and redoing steps in the prepare screen. The zoom tool allows for zooming in and out of the project by using the buttons, computer mouse wheel, or by using the zoom selection and drawing a box around the location that needs to be zoomed into. To reset the zoom, select the zoom percentage and this will automatically reset the zoom to the page. Holding the spacebar down and dragging the screen with the selection tool will pan the page. Text, images, and other elements can be aligned and distributed using the Align and Distribute tool. When selecting separate design components, this tool enables centering, alignment, and even line spacing when needed. Elements can also be positioned precisely on the plate. Another method for positioning graphics together is using the snapping tool. With this tool, objects will automatically snap to the edges or the center of objects or even the design page when used. Snapping will show as a dashed line on the screen at each snap location. Turning this tool off will stop the object from snapping. For non-run-on Ruby laser machines that are directly connected via USB to the computer, the lock laser head tool may be necessary. When this tool is turned off, the cursor on the screen showcasing where the laser head is located can be dragged on the screen in Ruby, and that will directly move the laser head that is connected to the computer to relocate that laser head. For a run-on Ruby laser machine, if this cursor is moved, it will only produce an error as this is a safety issue, because a run-on Ruby computer can be anywhere in a local network. When this tool is turned on, it will not allow you to move the head by dragging the cursor when locked. The grid button will turn on the grid as needed. This tool defaults on but can be turned off with this button. If your laser system is equipped with a Vision Design and Position Camera, or VDP, this camera can be turned on and off here. The camera view can be updated with this circle arrow icon. And the camera image can also be copied to the clipboard with this tool. Once copied, it is possible to open any graphic design software, and that copied image can then be pasted into the graphic in that software, so that designs can be drawn to scale onto the material, simulating what's inside your laser in your chosen design software. Please note that the page size of the graphic software needs to match the laser system's field for this to work. And in some cases, the pasted image will need to be scaled up to fit the page. This next tool is used to turn on the print and cut camera. When activated and the print and cut camera is installed on a compatible laser machine combined with the correct file, this tool will activate the camera when processing the file. The following tool will activate the rotary. Once opened, the product diameter can be measured and placed into this field. When a file is selected, the 3D preview box will show an active simulation of that design on the enter diameter. This view can also be enlarged, and the mouse can be used to rotate and pan it for review. If the design is moved or adjusted on the main page, it will show up in real time in the 3D simulation. To turn off the 3D simulation, select the 3D button next to the rotary tool. Next is the rubber stamp tool. First, open a file generated in the design screen using the rubber stamp mode. The design screen is used to convert a design into a mirrored and inverted rubber stamp file. Once the file is opened into the prepare screen, select the rubber stamp tool here. When this tool is activated with a rubber stamp file, the image and additional tools on the right side of the screen will show up. These other tools will allow a rubber shoulder angle to be selected, flat, medium, and steep. If a rubber stamp is going to be cut out, links can also be turned on and off here. Links are small tabs that are applied to the cut that will hold the rubber stamp in place, so many stamps can be cut and removed at once, clean, and then broke away from the main sheet after cleaning. The small question mark at the top of the page will show all the keyboard shortcuts for the prepare screen. 
The small bell at the top of the screen will show all notifications. For the following example, I will draw a square. Then select Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V to copy and paste that square. Here is an example when cut. The laser will cut out both squares, cutting the overlapping line twice. The following tool will allow you to skip this overlapping line, allowing you to save time and materials by overlapping designs like this. This tool does not default on, requiring you to select it for any job you need it for. I will now draw a circle and turn on snapping and center this circle to one of these squares. If I want to guarantee that this inner circle will laser cut first, this tool will do just that. The Inner Geometry First tool will cut from the inside out when on. This tool does default on, but can be turned on and off here. Here is where the job name and tags are located. Tags are located for searching and notes. And a descriptive job name will also be necessary to search for it later. This area on the right hand side is used to adjust the size of the graphic. The aspect ratio can be locked and unlocked here. Location and the location anchor points are used for a specific area as needed. When the upper left anchor point is selected and a location is added, that anchor point will move to that location on the screen. If that anchor point is changed, the new anchor point will move to that new location. The selected object can also be rotated manually by selecting the circle arrow at the top center of the graphic, or by manually typing the rotation angle into this field. The mirror horizontal and vertical tools are located here for mirroring a graphic. This tool is commonly used to reverse engrave an image into clear glass or acrylic. The reset button will reset the rotation. The searchable materials database is located here. This list includes recently used for quick access and favorite should they be identified. Materials can be searched for here and then selected in this refined list. After choosing a material, the parameters will show up by color. The color will have an arrow next to it so that all the parameters can be seen and adjusted. The adjustable settings include the power, speed, DPI, laser source, air assist, Z offset, number of laser passes, power correction, engraving direction, engraving mode, laser frequency, high quality mode, relief mode, dithering mode, and finally engrave covered mode. The color square can also be selected to showcase and change the color mode. For example, if the print and cut mode is turned on, this color can be assigned as the print and cut color. The cut setting shown in red here will have the material thickness and the material selected, including power, speed, frequency, laser source, air assist, Z offset, number of passes, power correction, and path planning. The Materials Detail button can be selected to see all these parameters laid out in a cleaner, more organized view and allow you to adjust these settings when needed. After opening this screen, selecting the Advanced drop-down menu will show all the same settings. And the three dots on the right side of each color can be used to copy from or delete the settings on this color. Settings can be applied to the color. For example, if I wanted to speed up the engraving on the black color by converting 50 to 60%, an error will show that the setting has been modified, and selecting the Reset button will revert it back to the original setting. Should you like to keep that setting, to keep that setting, select the Store button. Then save this new setting as a completely new setting, or overwrite the existing setting, effectively changing this setting by then selecting Save. As you can see, the setting has now been permanently saved. At the bottom of the page are the exact coordinates of where the laser head and the Z-axis is located at the time, if this information is needed. 
Finally, when the laser is ready for processing, send that file to the produce screen by selecting the Q button. Additionally, if no files are currently in the queue, you can also select Push to Laser, which will take you to the fourth and final produce screen for laser operation.